All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video to take you through the solution for this uh, first week's quiz so that you guys can have this to study from later. And um, in this week, we talked about the photoelectric effect. So we'll jump straight in by uh, going through the solution for part A of this problem. So in part A, uh, we're asked to find the work function of our europium cathode material um, given some data that we collected uh, using a photoelectric effect setup. So the first thing that I do when I'm solving one of these problems is to go through, underline everything that I think is important, and then write down those quantities with their symbols and their um, correct units. So for example, uh, I'm reading through this problem and I see that the light is 405 nanometers. I know that to be the wavelength, so I'll write that down. Lambda equals 4, 0, 5 times 10 to the minus 9th meters. You could also write that as 4.05 times 10 to the minus 7. What else do I have here? I have the stopping potential of 0 0.58 volts. So I'll write that down. V naught equals 0 0.58 volts. So I want to talk for a second about what that stopping potential actually is. The stopping potential is the potential at which we have to position this battery here, depicted in the circuit diagram, to grind our whole photoelectric effect circuit down to a halt. At the stopping potential, the energy of the battery is equal and opposite to the energy of the photoelectrons that are being ejected from the cathode material. In the photoelectric effect, the photoelectrons get all of their energy from the incident light. So we can think that the light establishes sort of an energy vector in this direction. So this is from the light. And then this uh, battery, when we're establishing the stopping potential, establishes an opposite vector. So this is from the battery. When those two are equal to one another, then we see that our current goes to zero, and we've measured the correct stopping potential potential for our, um, for our particular photoelectric effect setup. So what does that mean for us? That means that we can come up here to our equation bank and look at what we've got. That effect that I just described is summarized in this relationship in which the kinetic energy of an electron, K or K naught, all Ks are the same, is equal to the charge on an electron times the stopping potential. So that's the first equation that we'll need to solve this problem. K equals the absolute value of E times V naught. One other thing that I noticed when I was grading you guys' quizzes is that there's a lot of uh, people who confused V naught. Um, so V naught stopping potential. Nu naught threshold frequency. These are not the same thing. The threshold frequency is the energy of the light that we need to start ejecting photoelectrons. And the stopping potential I already described. I think that the confusion is coming from the similarity of these two symbols, so please don't confuse V's and nu's. Um, we're talking about an electrical potential here, not the uh, frequency of the light. So anyway, um, now that I've got this equation, I can go ahead and solve for the kinetic energy of my electron. Um, and then once I have that fact, you can also put equals k here. Once I have that uh, quantity in hand, I can plug that into this equation up here. k equals h mu minus v. So then I'm going to take this k, put this into k equals h mu minus v come over here to get some more space. Uh, we can rearrange this equation to P equals H U minus K or E equals H C over lambda, which we already have, minus K. So one final step to the problem is to realize that this setup will give you phi units of joules. To answer the question correctly, you needed to provide V 
in units of electron volts. So the final answer would have been phi in electron volts equals hc over lambda minus k all times electron volt over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, which is a conversion factor that we're given up here on the top. So I haven't done the math for you guys here, but just by setting up the equations, I would hope that you would be able to go back and see uh, where it is that you went wrong on the curve. All right, so even though that this was the complicated quote unquote math problem, uh, actually more people got points on this problem than they did on the second part of the problem which was the more conceptual aspect. So let's take a look at this question. What would be the effects of decreasing the wavelength and decreasing the intensity of the light? So let's go ahead and write that down. In this experiment, we're going to decrease wavelength and we're going to decrease intensity. So we want to know, we want to be able to predict what would happen to our experiment when we do those things. So let's go through our three options here. One, the stopping potential will be greater if we decrease the wavelength and decrease the intensity of the light. So the answer to this is that one is true. Um, and one is true because as we noted earlier, the photoelectrons get all of their energy from the incident light. So if I decrease the wavelength of the light, then I increase the frequency, and as we know from E equals H nu, which is given to us up here at the top, right here, um, when I increase the frequency, I increase the energy. And when I increase the energy of my, sorry, when I increase the energy of my photoelectrons, I increase the stopping potential. So, therefore, one And number two, I'm asking whether there would be more electrons ejected from the europium cathode. The answer to number two is false because uh, the key conclusion from the one of the key conclusions from the photoelectric effect experiment was that um, the number of photoelectrons that you get is inversely, or sorry, is purport, linearly proportional to the intensity. Lights behaving as photonic particles, so one photon in equals one photoelectron out. Intensity, if you decrease the intensity, you also decrease the number of photons, which means that you should decrease the number of photoelectrons. Therefore, two is false. Finally, number three, uh, the work function would increase. Um, we didn't ever talk about this directly, but um, the work function is actually a material dependent property. So all pieces of europium have the same phi value, the same work function. So phi is a materials property. And once I've built my experimental setup, there's nothing that I can do to change phi. I could take apart my entire apparatus, replace the europium cathode with, say, an iron cathode, and then my phi would be different. But as long as I'm not changing the actual identity of my electrodes, then phi never changes. So if phi is a materials property, three is false. All right, so I hope this provided a clear explanation of what went on on the quiz. And if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to seek me out.